has neurogenic orthostatic hypotension. There isn't any obvious secondary cause. She has uh, no evidence of central neurodegeneration, Parkinsonism, cerebellar atrophy, dementia, right? I forgot. Forget. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you say you forgot means you didn't forget. So, uh, so by some criteria, some definition, she has pure autonomic failure. Uh, when we when we uh, when we do our evaluation, we look for cardiac neurogenesis deficiency. It's part of the criteria for diagnosing pure autonomic failure. In her case, she has, or I have to trust my judgment, uh, my, my recollection, but she had remarkable loss of fluorodopamine derived activity in the heart. But a year and a half later, quantitatively, she did have an increase in fluorodopamine compared to baseline. That never happens in PAF. PAF is a progressive disease. Whatever she had is something that came on rather acutely, which is also very odd for PAF, and seems over the course of a very frustratingly long time uh, to have these partial, uh, partial recovery. And one other important factor, age. Right. PAF is a neurodegenerative disease, and uh, Below age 30, it would be. She doesn't look 60, does she? Not quite, right? <laughs> I think you don't see unilateral Horner syndrome in uh, That's all. Did everybody get a chance to see uh, uh, Horner syndrome? <coughs> you can see it more. <laughs> anyway, um, that's correct. Uh, now, she did have bilateral when I first saw her. And uh, over time, uh, the right side, for some reason, has in general recovered. Uh, sweats on the right side. Home. So I, I don't know why, but uh, this was more prominent always on the right side. Which angle? Which angle? Which what? Antibody test. Which antibody test? Uh, she was actually referred by Steve Bernino. Is Steve here? He was, but uh, yeah. he's the world's authority on autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy. Um, and at least at the time, she had a pan dysautonomia. So it was reasonable to look for uh, the antibody, the uh, circulating antibody to the neuronal nicotinic receptor, which mediates ganglionic transmission. But she was negative. Negative. And that's part of what the puzzle was because uh, if she were positive, it would be easy. Uh, but she was negative, and that's how she ended up coming to the uh, NIH. And how was treatment? How was treatment? Imperfect, <laughs> I would say. Uh, I think the, the, from the point of view of the orthostatic hypotension, uh, you're quite responsive to droxy Yes, right? yes. And actually, she, she had Jossie Bilba today, demonstrating that there, you don't necessarily have to be off of your medicines in order to, to see uh, an abnormal uh, Valsalva response. Um, Jossie Dopa uh, is a norepinephrine precursor. Uh, it gets turned into norepinephrine in all sorts of cells. It doesn't have to be taken up into sympathetic nerves. And actually, she's a good demonstration of that that she has such severe uh, loss of sympathetic noradrenergic uh, uh, in innervation. But droxydopa still works because it, uh, it's being turned into norepinephrine in non-neuronal cells that express the, uh, the enzyme uh, L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. This is what carbidopa blocks, for instance, if somebody who's on cinnamon. Uh, Plasma norepinephrine levels increase when a person is on droxydopa, and when the person is on uh, droxydopa and carbidopa, which prevents that conversion, then you don't see the increase in plasma norepinephrine or the increase in blood pressure. Uh, so it's been taught, it's not correct, but it's been taught 
that uh, the reason that blood pressure goes up in somebody on droxidopa is, uh, is because of the increase in plasma norepinephrine. But we've measured plasma norepinephrine, I think we measured in your case, uh, uh, because you were tested before, without and with droxidopa, I think. Yeah. And the increase in plasma norepinephrine with droxidopa is trivial, trivially small. It can't possibly explain the increase in blood pressure that occurs uh, in somebody on droxidopa. And uh, Guy Lamont, who was here, but he stepped out, has a first authored paper uh, based on uh, 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 his assessment of how does, where does droxidopa work that erases blood pressure if it's not, if it's not by way of plasma norepinephrine. And if, what you have to understand is that the, the kidneys have a tremendous amount of dopa decarboxylase, L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. And uh, when, when, these, when the proximal tubular cells of the kidneys see and take up droxidopa, the thing is dopa. And they turn it into norepinephrine. Uh, as a result, when he measured the, uh, the norepinephrine concentration in the urine compared to the plasma, there is a, a humongous increase in norepinephrine in the urine. Uh, droxidopa is a catechol. Uh, some of you know what catechol looks like. And uh, uh, so we can assay droxidopa and norepinephrine simultaneously in our catechols assay. And we can show, and I think you, you're an extreme example of it, that the ratio of, uh, of norepinephrine to droxidopa in urine was 100 times that in plasma. Many, many fold higher. Well, if, if the norepinephrine and droxidopa in the urine were just coming from the plasma, you wouldn't uh, That wouldn't explain it. The finding of a tremendous amount of norepinephrine in the urine in somebody on droxidopa uh, implies that there's a lot of norepinephrine being made in the kidneys from that droxidopa. Well, norepinephrine in the kidneys has important effects on blood pressure. There's local vasoconstriction, there's uh, stimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Uh, there's uh, stimulation of a nor a sodium reuptake, uh, uh, which can uh, result in, uh, in an increase in blood pressure as well. So the, our current hypothesis is that at least one of the reasons that droxidopa raises blood pressure is because of uh, production and local action of norepinephrine uh, in organs such as uh, the kidneys and possibly uh, in the gut. Yeah. If there's sympathetic failure, global failure, uh, and, and receptor sensitization, did she need a high dose, low dose, Nortera? Or... Mm -hmm. How was uh, the response? To that's that? an interesting question. Uh, what the, what's being referred to here is uh, denervation super sensitivity. If she has a loss, a dramatic loss of sympathetic neuroadrenergic innervation, the receptors for norepinephrine are looking for it, they don't find it, so they become super sensitive. Nobody knows exactly what that means, super sensitive, but uh, uh, let's just say for the sake of argument that it's from receptors that accumulating on the membrane surface. Uh, uh, in that situation, uh, droxidopa, which is going to generate norepinephrine could reach these noradrenergic receptors that are super sensitive and you get a nice increase in blood pressure. And uh, I'm guessing that that's part of the reason that uh, she does have a good response to uh, droxidopa. The other reason would be uh, baroreflex syntathoneural failure, which we just demonstrated. If you have some stimulus that raises the blood pressure, there isn't any barrel reflex of mediated uh, inhibition of sympathetic outflow. There isn't any sympathetic outflow to inhibit. So uh, there are two reasons why the person could have a very nice increase in blood pressure with droxidopa. Thank you.